This video marks exactly 10 years since one of the biggest natural disasters in human history. The BP oil spill, known as the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, after the name of the Korean rig that was used, took the lives of 11 crewmen and released nearly 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. The US Department of Justice issued billions of dollars in fines, and the area continues to recover from the incident today. But who was to blame? What were the long-term consequences? And could this be repeated again in the future? Here's how it happened. Construction of the ill-fated rig began in December 1998 by Hyundai Heavy Industries, a division of the well-known car manufacturer and the world's largest shipbuilding company. Production of the rig was commissioned by Swiss contractor Transocean, who paid $340 million for the ownership and was completed in February 2001. The rig was then leased by BP on rolling multi-year contracts for deployments in the Gulf of Mexico. It was used in a number of projects around the Gulf, including digging the deepest oil well in history off the coast of Texas. Texas in 2009. Deepwater Horizon began its final operation at the Macondo Prospect, the site of the eventual spill 41 miles off the southeast coast of Louisiana in February 2010. The seabed lies over 1500 metres below the water's surface, with the drill then extending as deep as 5.5 kilometres into the earth below the seabed. At 9.45pm on the 20th of April 2010, a surge of natural gas blew through the drill's concrete core, rising up to the rig's platform and exploding at the surface. 11 crew members were killed immediately, and a further 17 were injured by the blast. The 115 people on board who survived were rescued on lifeboats and helicopters. The rig was engulfed in flames for 36 hours before sinking around 10 o'clock on the morning of the 22nd of April. Following the explosion, oil continued to escape the damaged well at a rate of around 60,000 barrels per day. Soon after the disaster, attempts were made to stem the flow using remotely operated underwater vehicles, as well as a 125-ton containment dome. However, both were unsuccessful. In June, BP eventually managed to fit a cap to the well, which was able to siphon and collect around 25,000 barrels of oil per day, while the rest continued to pollute the Gulf. It wasn't until mid-July that a better fitting cap was installed to completely stop the release of oil into the Gulf. And only on the 19th of September, six months after the initial explosion took place, and following several days of pumping the well with cement, was the leak finally sealed and the well declared dead. The disaster was covered by news outlets across the globe, with BP coming under heavy criticism, and President Obama describing it as the worst environmental disaster America has ever faced. The leaked oil eroded over 2,000 kilometres of shoreline, destroying the homes of large fish and birds, as well as coral reefs. It's estimated that over 100,000 endangered turtles were killed, and over 1,000 dolphins, which continue to show much higher than expected rates of reproductive failure, lung disease, and heart issues. BP's stock value fell more than 50% in the immediate aftermath of the incident, as the volume of oil lost and the damage to the environment left their reputation in tatters. BP CEO Tony Haywood tried to play down the environmental impact of the spill, describing it as relatively tiny in comparison to the size of the ocean. After a string of further inappropriate comments, including that he wished for his life back after the disruption, BP announced on the 27th of July that Haywood would be leaving his role at the company. There was also anger amongst the British press, as American news outlets continued to refer to the culprits as British Petroleum, despite changing its official name to just BP back in 2001. A report by the Presidential Commission found that a series of systemic mistakes and blunders led to the spill, and that the oil pressure released from the well should not have led to the disaster that occurred. Some of these errors were made to cut costs and accelerate the project that was running five weeks behind schedule. A few of these mistakes included wrongly interpreting a negative pressure test, and the failure to evaluate the cement used, and observe that it may have been inadequate. The report concluded that there was no single cause of the spill, but the cost-cutting culture over time had slowly compromised the overall safety of the rig. In September 2014, a US district judge ruled that BP was guilty of gross negligence and willful misconduct. He apportioned 67% of the blame to BP, 30% to Transocean, and 3% to Halliburton, the cement provider. He consequently ordered BP to pay $18 billion in damages, on top of the approximate $28 billion they had already paid out in cleanup costs and damage claims with some reports today suggesting that the disaster may have cost BP over $80 billion in total. Transocean was to pay $1.4 billion in civil and criminal penalties, while Halliburton agreed to settle the majority of its claims by paying $1.1 billion into a trust. And none of the charges against individual managers and engineers resulted in any prison time being served. 
In response to the disaster, President Obama introduced the Offshore Well Control Rule, a series of regulations designed to prevent a similar incident from taking place in the future. But these regulations have slowly been reversed by President Trump since his time in office. And that's how it happened. Like and subscribe to see more videos and comment below with what you'd like to see next and we'll show you how it happened. Thanks for watching.